Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of eCoffee with Experts. I'm your host, Matt Fraser. And on today's show, I have with me Sophie Jones. Sophie is the founder of Sophie Jones Social, a full-service digital marketing and web development agency headquartered in Edinburgh, Scotland. Sophie Jones Social is an intuitive, helpful, and creative marketing agency that works with small businesses on a creative, personal level. Try and say that really fast. Uh, Sophie started in the marketing world as a social media marketer, and she holds a Bachelor's of Science and a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Geography, Geology, History, Political Science from the University of Kentonbury. When she has some downtime, she enjoys spending time with friends and family, as well as her cat, Gerald. Sophie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Yeah. So in today's show, uh, we're going to talk about how to turn your small business into a social media powerhouse. So how did you get started from going to having a degree in all of these things like geography and geology and history to doing social media marketing? I mean, that's pretty interesting. Yes, it's quite the journey. So I got my degree in New Zealand at the University of Canterbury, and I specialized in natural disasters and emergency management. So basically, it's if a tsunami was to hit what you would do in that situation and how different government bodies would react. So it's quite different. Mm-hmm. I was looking at doing that, you know, as a career. And so I had my yeah. first year out of university and I actually worked in international logistics, wow. um, getting freight across the world. And then I decided I want to have a bit of travel time. So I did an OE of to the UK and came uh-huh. to school. And Edinburgh and never left. So well, I haven't left yet. Um, so when I got to Edinburgh, I started a job at a tea company. Oh, yeah. And, which is quite interesting, I suppose, because it's the UK and we all drink tea. Um, and I worked in a shop there and managed the shop. And then eventually I took over their marketing and I'd never worked in marketing before. Um, so it was uh-huh. something new and different and exciting but once I started working in it I realized it was like all these different things that I like to do in one so that was good and then so yeah I did their social media marketing predominantly and some of the other little bits as well it was a small business so you do a bit Uh of everything but I really enjoyed running the social media and coming up with new fresh ideas and um, exciting our customers and things like that. So yeah, wow. that was my first job in marketing. <laughs> wow. So d- did you, how did you learn? How did you go about learning about like, I mean, obviously we're in a social media world and you, you know, um, I can tell just by looking at you that you're not like past 60. So you're not like, what is Facebook? <laughs> so we use it is what I'm trying to say, but how did you go about figuring out how to use it to, to apply to the, for the, for the, the business you were working for, the tea company? So it all worked quite in quite a funny way. It was kind of like my yeah. life leading up to it. When I was in New Zealand, I was uh-huh. involved in a lot of photography, just oh, yeah. like landscape photography, and, and it was just a hobby, really. Um, mm. I joined a group, and there were quite a few talks on how to, like, manage your Instagram um, and run your social media, and because, you know, these mm. photos – wanted them to go somewhere so mm-hmm. I learned a lot from there about how to run and um, use the social media tools as like a business tool and then I just had a natural interest in it so I would read a lot about it I listen to a lot of podcasts and read a lot of books and uh-huh. so I kind of picked up all this knowledge um, that I had sitting there and I didn't really realize it until I started using it um and yeah, it was all there. So that was great. And since then, obviously, I've learned a lot. And I mm. actually read something today. It said that the more you learn about marketing, the more you have to learn. And I completely agree with that. Oh, um, that the truth. Yeah. yeah that's, so true. <laughs> <laughs> that's the fun thing about it, though, is that <laughs> there is like there's there's no way. Number one, there are there are so many skill sets to learn about marketing in regards to social media, SEO, paid ads, uh, media ad buying, content marketing, email marketing, web analytics, digital analytics, you know, I could keep going. And Mm. and not only that, but then there's also 
you know, the different, different industries, because I've done marketing for uh, car dealers and ATV dealers and some service-based businesses. But if you ask me how to do marketing for a retail business, like I wouldn't know the first thing about marketing a tea company. Not at all. <laughs> I would have no idea. <laughs> I mean, off the top of my head, I couldn't even think. So what were some of the ways that you leveraged uh, social media to, to get the word out about the tea company? Oh, let me think. It was a while ago now. But um, we just Any did specific? lots. Of, yeah, we just did lots of... Um, first, we did some like brand building kind of campaigns just because okay. social media had kind of been left dormant and so we wanted to build it back up and you uh -huh. know entice customers that come in every day to look mm -hmm. at it and interact so it was about reminding them what we offered and why it was different okay. and so we did a lot of marketing around that and then oh. we did some really fun scotland specific campaigns so there were oh. some teas that were made with scottish ingredients or uh -huh. to do with whiskey and gin um and so we did lots of stuff around there with we collaborated with whiskey and gin companies in scotland and we did some marketing campaigns and social marketing campaigns around there we came up with cocktails with the ingredients um and posted those on social media and hosted events as well where we got people wow. to make these cocktails so there's so much more that than you kind of originally think you could do with the marketing of a tea company yeah. or any company. But once you get stuck in, you realize that it's not that dissimilar to a car dealership. You know, you're still okay. selling something and you're wanting yeah. to create a connection. So, yeah. That's amazing. There's, so, you know, so there's so many things that you just unpacked there that we could talk about for two hours. Um, <laughs> for instance, you basically, you know, communicated the brand and reboot the brand. Uh, can you tell me about what that was like and the process that you did for that? Like the type of content you created specifically um, and able to do that? Uh, yeah. So we started by just kind of looking at where the company had been and where it was now at. Kind of just, okay. you know, taking a step back and looking at the process that changed because tea is often you kind of think quite old school China cups, like things like that. Yeah. But this company was not like that. It was new, it was inventive, it used like no plastic. It was kind of, I don't know if you've heard of like T2 in Australia, but it nope. was quite like that. It was like basically they use their tea to create cold brews and um cocktails and all these different kinds of drinks oh, it's not just wow. like a cup of tea anymore um and so we'd the company had got to that stage where it was doing all this really exciting stuff but it wasn't necessarily showing through on the social media um oh, wow. so we kind of took a step back and looked at where we wanted to go and where we wanted to take it and then we started yeah. putting that across on social media by doing quite simple posts to start with about things that we offered, like why we offered it, that kind of stuff. And then we looked at like, then when we brought in new products or we were like kind of celebrating plastic free packaging, we yeah. then did posts and campaigns specifically about that. So like the plastic free packaging was a huge one because the tea industry, you don't know, think about it, but uses so much plastic. And okay. so we kind of show people how to use that, how to home compost it, how yeah. like you could use it again, use the tins again. And so yeah. it was lots of like videos and Instagram lives. And we kind of used all of the features that social media oh. gave us to put that message across. So we started just basically re-educating them to help rebuild the brand up and show them why it was the cool hip tea in town. <laughs> So you were able to take something that was boring, like everybody thinks tea is just kind of pretentious people sitting around drinking tea with their fingers up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> and this company has done something totally different. So you were able to take that message and through different mediums of, or different, um, I don't want to say mediums, but different uh, 
uh, components, for lack of a better word, the word would come to me, but I'm talking about, you know, pictures and messaging and video and live events in order to show people how this company was different. Mm. Yes. What, yeah. was, what was the result of it? Because it's obviously a small business, right? Well, it is, but also because we were we were putting this out to customers that were coming through the doors every day of this yeah. e-company, but we were also putting it out to wholesale customers and sharing oh, yeah. it to these clubs like these customers and so what happened mm-hmm. because of that is the tea company brought on a lot more wholesale customers which oh, obviously wow. where a lot of the big money is because they're buying yeah. it for big offices conferences things like that um mm-hmm. so because they kind of saw the company building and everything and saw what they could offer across because of all their marketing streams yeah. they came on board with the tea company so we could see real life things like that happening growth and people coming in yeah real life growth and the customers even coming in and saying i saw this drink on social media are you offering it on your menu and we'd have them all on our menu if we were going to put them on social media so we could see people becoming more inventive and not just sticking to a pot of tea but going for tea cocktails and things things that they'd never normally go for so that was quite a nice like real life but also the sales increased and things like that for the company so that wow was <laughs> yeah absolutely so yeah. in terms of reach like do, do you have any um the case study like do you have any uh can you share the impact of it like how much would did they go from like a uh, hundred fans on the page to like two hundred thousand, or 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 are you are you able to share any or or comfortable sharing any information like that i'm just curious uh how how they're you know how how it grew it, i don't want to go into too much detail about it but okay. uh like instagram for example went from a couple of thousand followers to quite a few thousand followers and it was more just like before they weren't getting very many likes or comments people weren't didn't seem very engaged in engaged. the content but as we like included them in it there was a lot more engagement on all oh. of the social media channels and like Twitter was a lot more wholesale customers. Oh, yeah. Like tweeting about the tea that had arrived for them and things like that. Oh, but yeah. then on Instagram, it was a lot of like everyday customers saying, I baked tea with this cake or I did this. So there was a lot more of like sharing of content, them tagging oh, us wow. and stuff and comments and things. So that it was just kind of like bringing the social media to life and making it more of a community which okay. was a really nice impact to see and obviously the follower numbers grew but more than that the engagement grew which was important <laughs> so what led to the first of all you just mentioned how you were included the customers so how did you do that and how did you increase the engagement like for instance how did you get people to make a cake with tea did you guys create <laughs> recipes that that because that's such a brilliant idea mm-hmm create post recipes that or what they can do with the with the tea or or could you expand on that a little bit because this is fascinating yeah so um we will come up with recipes of how to include it in like cake icing or a cake or even things like cupcakes muffins brownies all sorts of things like baking with tea but also cooking with tea putting it in like certain teas and sauces that you might wow. put on like meat and things like that so uh-huh. we got quite creative with the recipes um but i was quite lucky because although i was you know in charge of the social media and the marketing i worked on the floor and so i talked to our customers every single day so i would be yeah. like you should try and make a cake with this and then they would go home and make it and because we'd had that interaction and i was like oh you know tag us in the picture on social media they yeah. would go home and tag it tag us in it and it wasn't just me it was our whole team were really like interactive with the customers so um they all kind of just you know talked about the social media and talked about different things and got them to invest in the brand because they included them they would be like can I take a picture of you drinking your 
tea latte or something and then can we post it and then you tag them in it and then suddenly uh-huh. you have their friends commenting on the pictures and things like that so it was it wasn't just the efforts on like social media it was us being on the floor interacting with the customers every day knowing them knowing what kind of things they would like um wow yeah which was really valuable so including the 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 staff that are direct customer facing and training them Mm -hmm. in order to get them to be able to build relationship and ask questions and include the customers that are there Mm -hmm. um, in the process. I mean, that's brilliant. And it wasn't even, it was really beneficial, but it wasn't even like we really had to train them because they were really, they were all so invested in the brand themselves that they wanted other people to know about it. They wanted to share all this information. And I think that's such a key thing for a business to have. If you can get a team who's really enthusiastic about what you're offering, then you have 10, 20, 30 free spokespeople for you that are going out to your customers and they're telling them what you offer. So that was a really key part of it but also it just left our customers with a great experience they went home and they thought everyone was so friendly I had lovely slice of cake lovely cup of tea I learned something new I tried something new and we'd always have like free samples of new teas or and things like that available for Uh people to try so yeah it was good (laughs) how much of a part did imagery play in the social media strategy a big part like tea is yeah. very because if somebody's seeing it on the screen they can't taste it they don't yeah. know how it smells they don't actually know if it's going to be nice so we spent a lot of time taking like pictures of content and we had a photographer that worked um within the company as well and helped with oh, that yeah. and a lot of videos and how to like make something and we'd make a video of exactly how oh, you make wow. it and we were so product up, demonstrations. Yeah, product demonstrations, exactly. In, in a sense of it, yeah. You're making mm-hmm. you know, like I mean it's cool. You, like, I didn't mean to interject or interrupt there, but for other people, like exactly what Sophie's talking about was product demonstrations, like do product demonstrations. Yeah. Like, you know, I think mm-hmm. restaurants should make videos about how they make their stuff for mm-hmm. every single menu item that they have, not only post a picture yeah. of it, but create a a, a, a video of how it's made and a re and a and a, and then show it on social media in two times speed. Mm. some music and anyway okay so you were doing product demonstrations and creating that type of content so you were creating posting videos or or, sorry posting pictures of the certain different products um how did you make it interesting though like for instance you could just take a picture of a uh a box of tea and post that and that would kind of be boring so what were some of the ways that you made it interesting because this this is interesting to me (laughs) we'd always if we had a box of tea it would always have something else in the picture like Say if it's a strawberry tea, we'd have okay. fresh strawberries in the picture. So instantly oh, wow. it's like you can physically see what would be in the tea. Um, yeah. And it made it brought more color to the pictures, made it more exciting. Yeah. But a lot of the time it was like of the drinks themselves or uh-huh. the cake or the food or whatever we yeah. made. And we tried to include people in it as much as we could. So we might have somebody like if it was... There was one like whiskey tea, which I've talked about. We would send that to the whiskey company and they took fantastic pictures of their staff sitting on whiskey barrels, drinking a cup of tea. And it was the tea and that the whiskey tea that we made. And so it's like something is, and it's on an iPhone. (laughs) So So it doesn't. Wow, go ahead. It was on an iPhone, so it doesn't. (laughs) No, no, go ahead. Oh, yeah, it was on an iPhone, so it doesn't need to be expensive. Um, it doesn't need to be like a big camera setup or a big film yeah. set. You can literally use your iPhone to get these images. It's just thinking about how to do it in a creative way, like a big like Scottish man with a huge beard sitting on a whiskey barrel is going to make an impact. Absolutely. You know, drinking tea. <laughs> so you leveraged uh, industry partners to yes. create content. And they did it for free because it's going to also benefit them. Yes. And I mean, their name's on the tea as well. So because yeah. it's their whiskey or... Oh, gin, it's their whiskey that's made in it. Yeah. So it's easier, oh. you know, to get them involved. But yeah, it was 
powerful because then their audience is involved in it as well. It's being shared on their social media. So it's being seen by more people. So yeah. Wow. That's bloody brilliant. <laughs> so like I'm thinking like a mortgage broker, a realtor and a home inspector could all leverage each other's channels to promote each other. Definitely. In this, in, in this way, it's like tea and the ingredients that are in it and the brand that's behind those ingredients. And, you know, I was picturing in my mind as you were talking about the strawberry tea, like you could have a box, you could have the boxes of the tea. Like I'm picturing a box of tea that's closed and then one that's open with the tea bags, like three or four tea bags in mm -hmm. front of it. And then the strawberries, maybe a basket of strawberries with the strawberries in front of it, out of it, on in front of it. And then a clear cup of tea, you know, a glass tea that you can mm -hmm. see through with the bag inside. And mm. that would make such an amazing picture. So I, that, yeah. you painted that picture <laughs> in my mind while I was, not that you had the intention to, or whether you did or not, I'm just saying that's what I was visioning. Mm. Um, so my gosh, this is like, <laughs> I mean, people think tea is so boring, but like, goodness gracious, what a way to make tea sexy and just make it appealing and get people talking about it, including mm -hmm. it in, uh, in ingredients. Did you guys do any incentivization for marketing this, this product for, and what I mean by that, any contests, like, make it, like, for instance, you had mentioned the, um, getting people to make something with the ingredients. I, I could easily see uh, throwing up a contest for that and, you know, win free tea for a year and just mm. enter this contest, the bake a whiskey cake contest or whatever, whiskey gravy or <laughs> sauce or whatever. I was thinking that's on my head here. Uh, did you guys do anything like that? Or what are your thoughts on whether that would work or not? We definitely did. We didn't do it with anything like like the cakes and stuff that was all user okay. generated because they wanted to do it but we definitely did competitions where it would be like tag a friend you know in this picture oh, yeah. and both win a tea and we'd normally do it around a specific thing like if it was Wimbledon time okay. then we might mm. do like promote the strawberry tea because like Pim's strawberries all of that so Wimbledon oh, yeah. so we would look at doing things like that but we'd also do competitions with other businesses like the whiskey business, the gin business, and okay. also like local businesses that served our tea and were a wholesale partner. We'd look at doing competitions with them as well to kind of tap into their followers and they oh, could wow. tap into ours. And so there was a lot of like incentivization in that way. And also that gives us the chance to share the product with people who might not normally go and buy it, but wouldn't mind it if they want it for free and then, it's good. So then they get addicted and keep. keep <laughs> that is amazing. So you leverage contests with some of the partners, like restaurants that were serving it or other such partners and uh, put things together. That's yes. amazing. Cause like, yeah. Win free tea for a year. Plus you could add like, you know, free uh, sandwiches, you know, win a mm -hmm. free lunch lunch for a month for a year mm -hmm. plus free supply of tea like the restaurant or deli or whatever you know what I'm talking sandwich shop could uh could provide that so there's there's so many different ways that this could be applied to to uh different industries you know whether it's like a wedding photographer uh mm -hmm. or or a child portrait photographer could say hey when you know when if enter to win a free portrait mm -hmm. um and then they could follow up with something else or I don't know. I'm just trying to think of ideas of how how ways that they could they could do this. Yeah, well, even, it's definitely even. something like with my clients that I've done yeah. them as well. Um, and we've I've got all sorts of clients in all sorts of sorts of industries, and, and lots of them are like the tea industry. They're not perhaps the most interesting. So I love the challenge of how do we make wow. this interesting? How do we get people invested into it? And thinking like this is so exciting i want it even though it so might do you, not <laughs> do you have another story besides tea about a, a brand that you've used social media to to leverage mm, so, and, and to you know explode sort of deal <laughs> so i've got um i have one client who was running a fabric import business so it's wow. not hugely interesting less no your sewer or things like that. So we worked together to 
look at their social media and how we could make it more interesting, more exciting for other people. And we have run competitions as well, just like um, uh-huh. I did at the tea company. Um, and we kind of, I looked at how, if I was not interested in fabric, which I'm not really, what would I want to see on the social media that would maybe get me to start sewing or get me to pick up a hobby? And so yeah. it was just about reframing it because it, before most of the social media was for people that already sewed but once they had enough fabric they wouldn't necessarily come back for more until they finished all their projects so you've got a period where you're trying to either get new sewing customers in or waiting for these other people to finish up with their fabric and so I was looking at how we can how can we turn it from you don't have to be a pro sewer you can do it as a hobby and it was quite good timing because it was locked down. And so lots of people yeah. had time on their hands. People were looking for new things to do. Um, but we basically came up with similar to the tea company, like tutorials okay. yeah. on how to make different things, how to make like a pillowcase or how to make puppets for children, like all these different things with fabrics. And we also did in-depth posts on like, different fabrics and why they like this fabric might be better than this fabric and oh wow which was interesting and we took some of it on a sustainable kind of route so some of the uh-huh. fabric are uh, cutoffs of like designer brands that so that say like Gucci has made something and they have this fabric left over and they just leave it at the factory and so the factory will buy off them from a cheap price and then it's just sitting there gathering dust so this company was buying these really good cuts of fabric and was bringing them to a market which is New Zealand who like do not really have many good fabric shops if any so they were bringing okay. it to this brand new market and it exploded. There were like people ordering from Singapore and even like around New Zealand, not just where the company was based, but from other towns and cities and like lots of the fabric that they were importing was from the UK. They had people from the UK placing orders for fabric that had come from the UK. And it was just because... And they were they ordering were, it from New Zealand. Yeah, from New Zealand. Because from the UK. They, I love it. <laughs> Went to New Zealand and people from the UK were ordering it. That is ordering it. unbelievable, Sophie. I <laughs> because they just didn't know about it. And so then they suddenly found out, oh, I want this fabric. I want these kits. I want this. And so we came up with <laughs> lots of imaginable ways to market this fabric, but it's good fun. <laughs> I, I have to tip my hat to you because <laughs> um, this is just so fascinating. You took fabric like leftover fabric and created conversations about it using educational type posts, uh, tutorial type posts, informational type posts. For instance, the information of where it came from, how it's made, what made it different, what is different because it's sustainable. It's Mm -hmm. uh, you're, 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 you're not allowing it to be thrown into the uh, garbage or the refuse or whatever you want to call it. Uh, therefore, you're you're helping the environment, which is a, a, something we all care about, mm-hmm. um, to one degree or the other. And uh, you know, so all these different ideas for like creating different things out of both the tea, but now the the fabric. How did you come up with those ideas? Were you surveying customers of what they were creating, or did you like search on Google for trends of what people were making? Like, I I don't even know what like. I'm a very tall guy. It's very hard for me to find clothes. If I had a seamstress, like one day I'm going to get custom shirts made and custom suits made, whatever, because I'm six foot six and 220 pounds. Like going to my wife, when she first met me, she wanted me to, she wanted to go and buy me new jeans. And I'm like, okay, she was criticizing my clothes. Like, okay, good luck with that. You know, let's go. And she then discovered how next to impossible it is for me to find proper fitting clothing. There's only a few stores that I can go to. But the point I'm trying to make is like, how did you think of those? How did you come up with the, what kind of research did you do to come up with the ideas of exactly what was your process for coming up with ideas of content to share of things that were people were making? Like, did you survey the customers and use their ideas or did, was it a Google search or research or, or how did that come about? It was a little bit of all of them, I think. Some of it was yeah. just um, 
intuition. So I kind of just thought, like, what would I want to see? What would other people yeah. want to see? And I was quite lucky, like, with the fabric. My mum, when I grew up, she sewed. And so I had, oh. like, kind of what you could make or what you could do with it. And so okay. that would be helpful. But definitely Google's my best friend. I like to Google what other companies are doing, what other people are up yeah. to in the industry, what kind of trends are going on in the industry. Okay. Um, and just looking at like other people's social media and oh yeah, okay. customers, what they want. Mm. So like with the tea company, it was obviously easier. I was seeing the customers every day. I could kind of get a yeah. scent. They would constantly be like, oh, do you have this tea? Oh, I want this tea. So you kind of got a sense of what they wanted and what new teas oh, they wanted and things, okay. which is helpful. But when you yeah. don't have that face-to-face customer experience, like the fabric business is e-commerce, so you don't have the ability mm-hmm. to just talk mm-hmm. to your customers. It was a lot of like just seeing what they liked and doing more of that. So you could yeah. kind of like test out posts and okay. – um, with we had like an email newsletter so it would be like we'd send one out with new products and people would either buy them or wouldn't and yeah. would reply to it and be like do you have this fabric in this color so it was a bit of like trial and error to see what they kind of wanted and then from there I thought okay well if they like this kind of fabric from this fabric you can make this 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 let's make the oh, content wow. of that and so <laughs> oh wow of like and I think a lot of marketing is using your intuition and kind of like, yeah. obviously, especially working now as an agency owner, it's all about market research. It's all about like yeah. looking at insights and data and stuff. But I don't think you could beat like your actual natural brain and your creative way of thinking and just literally thinking outside of the box, putting yourself in the customer's shoes and thinking, how could I make this exciting? How could I make this so that they think to themselves i need this i want it and yeah. so it's just a bit of all of that <laughs> wow yeah it's interesting marketing is 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 um in my opinion certain parts of it like yes the data side here's what i'm trying to get at the data side of it uses your left i've heard people say this doesn't exist anymore whatever but the left side of your brain is very analytical and the right side of your brain is very intuitional and ideas and creativity and in some ways, marketing is about good marketing is about mm-hmm. what you've done mm-hmm. using your left brain to like analyze the data. Who are the customers, the market research? Because honestly, you can't do marketing without market research. Mm-hmm. I've been there, done that, you know, can't even build mm-hmm. a website without market research mm-hmm. and knowing what there's so many things you need to know before mm-hmm. building a website. And I don't want to go down that rabbit trail. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, yeah, it's so interesting how you have to leverage the left side of your brain to think about the data and think about all those analytical things. And then the right side, created side of your brain to like um, think about the ideas that you've come up with of how to create interest and desire and, you know, make it sexy and make it desirable. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's fascinating. And, and would you agree with that sentiment, that statement? Mm, yeah, definitely. But yeah. I'm dyslexic and so I think part of that is kind of a gift to be able to like I don't I like obviously do all the data and everything and um have people in my business that are way better all of that kind of stuff than me but creative wise and knowing how to be like instinctive and stuff I think that comes naturally from just thinking in a different way um And because when I grew up, I was told that if you're dyslexic, you're very good at art and things. I was never good at any of that. And uh-huh. I always think like, oh, I, that's not great. I'm not good at anything creative. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think I've been able to use that side of my brain, especially being, you know, in marketing and things. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's fascinating how things that, uh, thank you for sharing that, by the way. And a lot that's of good. people would come up I'm and just share that. I'm just going to my laptop is dying. This is... Oh, your laptop's dying? Okay, one sec. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. I mean, you know, a lot of people would not be so transparent or vulnerable for sharing something like that. So you've taken something that some people perceive as a weakness and turned it into a superpower. Mm. Um, and that's awesome. Um, I was recently diagnosed with ADHD about six weeks ago. And uh, I'm 46 years old. And I wish someone had told me about it uh, 20 years ago. 
if not longer. Mm Because I look back at my life and go, holy smokes. You know, when my wife found us and my brother-in-law, they're like, oh, wow, that explains everything. I won't get into the details, but but I also realized that it is a super, it is something like I've read some thing about it being a, don't look at it as a weakness, but as a superpower. Cause like mm-hmm. people that we can think outside of the box, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's normal things that normal neurotypical people, their brains work differently and not, I don't, I'm not trying to put neurotypical people down, but uh, it's just, we think in ways that just, you know, it's, it's no wonder I have 155 domain names. Cause I, I can think of business ideas like, like nobody's business, but like, mm-hmm. or campaigns, you know, I can think of campaigns as well. And so it's kind of interesting to hear someone else share their, how they, how they've been able to leverage their weakness. Uh, but, <laughs> but you know, the key for us some ways is to like leverage other people to do some of the things that we're not so good at. So yes, exactly. kind of sharing delegate. that, <laughs> like delegate, 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 you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and focus on your strengths and know what your strengths are and your weaknesses, delegate. <laughs> mm-hmm. hey, this has been, this has been an absolutely uh, fascinating conversation. I, I'm so glad that, that you came on the show today. Uh, what's one big takeaway that you'd like our, our audience to get from this episode? I think um, just to let your creativity shine through when you're creating any kind of marketing doesn't need to be social media marketing and for small businesses even if you don't have a big budget you can think outside the box use the things that you have and um, use your customers use your tea everything that you have at your fingertips and your product or service and um one thing that i always think with small businesses and something that i've learned from working at you know, as an agency with lots of small businesses, it's just keeping your social media consistent. Keep posting. Okay. okay. On it. Yeah, I think that's a big thing. Lots of um, people kind of speak to their followers a lot, and then suddenly they drop off, and then yeah. their followers are left thinking, well, "Why? Who are you? Where have you gone?" And so, I yeah. think if you can stay consistent with your marketing and keep up with it, then you'll have success. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely well maybe we'll have to have you back on about how to create a content marketing strategy calendar sort of deal of planning mm-hmm. out your content <laughs> anyway it's been a, absolutely it's, it's been a pleasure having you here how, how can our listeners connect with you online um through instagram and facebook and it's at sophie jones social which is my marketing okay. agency or mm-hmm. on linkedin sophie jones which is me sophie jones <laughs> oh fantastic well again pleasure having you here Thank you Thank for you talking for about me. what you've shared today about making tea exciting. That was just awesome. Uh, <laughs> and it's just been a pleasure. Lovely to speak to you. <laughs> right. You have a great day. Thank you.